Hello, everyone. Welcome to Twits and Crits. We are Funhouse, and we're playing Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, welcome to this new season of Twits and Crits. We're going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, it'll be easy for new people to jump in here. It's going to be more self-contained kind of a thing. And there's yeah. a theme this season. There is a, a theme. Dark and interesting theme. Um, the macabre. Mysterious. Sexy. Yeah, it is mysterious. We, we are dubbing the season the League of Extraordinary Gyrement. <laughs> <sighs> oh, our own Alex J. Oh my Look, gosh. it's all of our favorite <laughs> characters like um, Quartermain, Woman. This is not. <laughs> this is not representative yeah. of the series. Creature from the Black creature Lagoon. From the Black <laughs> Lagoon. Yeah, creature, werewolf. Is, invisible, invisible Man. man yeah, yeah and not representative. That hair is attached to the hat, by the way. <laughs> Decker has short bleach tips now. Yeah. So this what? is no. our darker universe season. And uh, we hope that you guys <laughs> will the enjoy it. Gentleman's not part of the dark universe, but <laughs> it doesn't matter. That's fine. Darker universe. Uh, yeah, yeah. This right, is the darker right, universe. Right. Worlds um, collide. Yeah. This season. If you're if you're joining in for the first time, it's oh, it's okay. You don't have to have watched seasons one through three to be caught up and know what's going on. But these are characters that we did play in those seasons. But you should have an easy time of in meeting them and figuring out who they are. It's kind of like so in friendly. One Piece. How they took the break off in one piece and they. Why is everyone going? The so, so, gone. Lawrence all understood left. you. Why'd the camera turn off? Just to catch everyone up, you guys are on a continent Why called Aton. Look like Looks like Africa. Aton? Um, it's Africa. Aton. I don't think I ever knew that. Yeah, well, I had to name it eventually. As in, it's a ton of work to hey, get uh, this done. Uh, <laughs> last, <laughs> last couple of seasons, you guys spent most of your time in Gael with a small trip down to Luce and then back again. Uh, to kick a bad guy's ass. Which we did. Which you did. Easily. Yeah, look, I'm going to jump into it. Uh, five years has, have passed since the battle in the skies over Periel, when the world was almost destroyed. The mercenaries turned heroes, known as the Twits, have long since disbanded their fellowship. That's us. <laughs> their leader, the dwarf paladin Myriadis Oprobles, returned to his village in the mountains of Yudrul. That's right, he's our leader. He wasn't even a royalty. <laughs> Uh, having witnessed firsthand how cruel and unjust the world can be, Miri decided to keep being a hero and make real change in this world. I did. So he ran for mayor. Oh, Jesus. He, he won in a record breaking landslide. However, his unwavering overcommitment. Literally, it was a landslide. <laughs> Killed the other candidate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> his unwavering overcommitment to honor, justice, and morality have begun to wear on his dwarven constituency. Uh -oh. oh, boy. Did he find a thick dwarven woman to, to spend the cold dwarven nights with? That's a good question, Miri. Maybe. What do you mean, maybe? <laughs> hey, you keep your public maybe there's life more public than one. Your private life private. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's a public. He is a politician. Now. Politician, though, yeah. His. None what? of your business. All right, it's none of your <laughs> I business. I think it works that way. Mary, what, what's the toughest part about being mayor? I guess waking up one day and realizing you are mayor. Uh, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> That's very hard. I mean, he got elected did they, did mayor. Yeah, didn't you run a campaign? Do they yeah, call him mayor? Kind of oh my god! Marriott, Marriottis will problems. Uh, you can't, you can't make good. everyone happy. No matter what you do, someone's always complaining. It's all the affairs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so not, um, uh, not him though. It's his <laughs> a significant oh. other. <laughs> Uh, Miri, as a paladin and a mayor, do you believe in the separation <laughs> of church and state? Ooh, good question. This is like part of the debate that he had to do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 oh, look, a landslide. <laughs> yeah, in the grand mayor. scheme of things, yes. Oh, he does. Government, he does government should be hey, good for mostly you. secular. He said mostly, though. Yeah, that was <laughs> a, and everybody bit of a weasel answer. answer. There's, some, uh, there's some legislation you can hide in there. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Again, just more... Yeah. This dwarf village, they don't know what they're in for. <laughs> Mary, what are you going to do about all those landslides? I do hope to get reelected mm. in another landslide. Career politician. <laughs> because you want to get reelected, my family is in Wait. danger. Oh yeah, who God. made more What's yeah, yeah. going on? I don't, I don't, know. Know. I don't, I don't even know. Right I, don't know. I don't think the landslides were. Uh, oh, well, never mind. Yeah, they were. Um, <laughs> let me go with it. <laughs> but you're happy, Mayor. Uh, yeah. Anything in your, your past adventurous life? Any lessons you learned that you apply to your mayoral uh, dictatorship? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> power corrupts. Well, you have power though. Are you have you abused your mayor powers? Probably a little. A little. A little. At least some. All right. You know, I just I wasn't quite ready for the the full the full responsibility he, of being there. He was mayor. probably at like In a some feast. Ways. Anyone? Can you pass the salt? And went ah, dang it. <laughs> of course they're going to be the salt. I'm the mayor. Um, but that and that. Uh, People are obnoxiously sheltered once you come back from a whatever you call it that I, that I went An on adventure that, that Mary went on. Yeah, he, oh. he thinks people are. He realizes how sheltered people are, how ignorant they are. 
Got a case of the Bilbo's. <laughs> <laughs> That's different. It's actually the same. <laughs> yeah. uh. All right. Well, uh, meanwhile, uh, the barbarian Derek Benslord and the eccentric fighter Raxon Bartooth, these two guys. Hello. Hello. They teamed up to become rogues for hire, employed by small villages and townships to rid them of unwelcome bandits and raiders. I mean, I wouldn't say that we teamed for a up. Cost. Yeah. I kind of just said, I gotta go make some cash. And I had nothing better to and do. he followed. Yeah. But uh, I guess it's been working out. We've been making pretty good money. Yeah, I think I'm Captain Nemo, yeah. so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> My, I only speak with a British accent. Which is who, Captain Nemo? <laughs> I like this <laughs> British, and that's like <laughs> Sean Connery. <laughs> it's not even Giles? Uh, oh, um, boy. Yes, uh, it's been quite profitable for profitable, us. Profitable, yes. <laughs> <laughs> There was an incident where uh, yeah, we, were, we were escaping a burning Zeppelin and uh, Raxan hit his head and ever since then he's spoken yeah. this way. <laughs> I have to get back to my submarine. There, he, he's always talking about his submarine. Underwater boat. Um, <laughs> he doesn't even yeah, know what the movie's about. It's been, it's been a long time. <laughs> uh, you know, we've learned a little bit of humility from our quest. Yeah. It's, it's one thing to go from being a king, like I once was, of... Squirrels. Uh, group of people, squirrels and orcs, <laughs> and uh, watch most of them die in front of you. Gotcha. It changes are, you. Are you trying which to? Which is like, why I'm mostly for profit now. Are, are you? I was gonna say, are you still trying to chase that dream of fame? Like you're still trying to recapture some of it, even though you're getting older. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try and buy it now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wealth seems to be That's a good. more secure way into the history books than gotcha. uh, fighting for. A people. Uh, my uh, my family since died after the five years, uh, and I actually came from a wealthy family. I don't Are know if that's ever. Yeah, he was trying. He had to go to night school. Yeah, <laughs> he told uh, me about it. I don't well, remember we were, that. At we all. spent a lot of my, time, and he talks in his sleep. Well, yeah. Well, new dad came along after old dad went away. So Derek. What? No. Oh, I thought he's your new dad. Derek's friend, friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but new dad died anyway, and uh, so I inherited my uh, fortune. And I, I put the estate up for sale. It's now a school for gifted youngsters. Professor uh, Raxon, school for gifted youngsters. <laughs> <laughs> and I took. Uh, well, he has a British accent, and all yeah, makes sense. I he? Also, he doesn't know what gifted means. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he uh, fucking knows who Sean like Connery is. Like, yeah. He'll like see a kid, an orphan, or whatever. We walk you through the streets. He'll see a kid with one eye, and he'll be like, "You want to go to school?" Yeah. <laughs> all the they mostly they mostly keep the house clean, but I use the funds to uh, travel with uh, my dog friend. And we uh, were just traveling the world trying to make make a buck, you know? Yeah, yeah. Tax-free because you're a school, right? I haven't told Derek that I have all this money. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm constantly so paying for everything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Derek, uh, in, all, in your five years of adventuring, have you run into any other uh, odd human-dog hybrids like yourself? Uh, no, I haven't. I have run into both man and beast, but never the two in betwixt one another. Um, I, I appear to be the only... I, I, as suspected, I was the only one of my kind. Um, because the reason I'm a half dog man is because there was an accident when I was a youngster. Oh. There was a, a pagan cottage that I was exploring, and uh, because the other kids dared me, said I was too scared to do it, so I went in there, but while I was in there, I touched some stuff, and then it caused okay. me to be halfway through the whole transformation of man to beast. And so, um, but yeah, I haven't seen anyone. I've kind of given up on finding anyone like me. Um, it's a little sad. And it is a little sad, you know, but I can still bang. I can actually bang. <laughs> I can bang. That was a either. question we all had. Yeah. I was wondering if you could I can, still I bang. I can bang either, though. So, like, I can actually, like, legally have sex with animals, but I can also legally oh. have sex with people cool. and human beings. It's both worlds. He's got the paperwork. Yeah, I got the license. So, uh, Raxon, you uh, have an odd sort of possession mm -hmm. slash multiple personality yeah. guy going mm -hmm. demon curse on your yep. family. Yeah, it's gone. Um, it's gone? Yeah. Oh, it, wow. It, it died with dad, dad. Oh, wow. my Or died goodness. with new dad, yeah. So the, the curse has been lifted, and uh, now it, uh, the spirit, the evil spirit haunts the uh, the gifted mansion. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that that's necessarily... Ha Never mind. What? Usually when curses are lifted... Never mind. Lifted from him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, fine. I transferred it. I transferred it to some little hobo. Yeah, let the gifted children deal with it now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think gifted the hobo was hobo. Gifted? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Man. I'm actually sad to see Dorkar go. Oh, that's okay. Dor no, Dorkar is still around. Okay. He's just well, he's in the mansion. Let well, me yeah, tell yeah. you from someone who's been in with the him master for the last suite. Years, in the master suite. Raxan has plenty of problems. <laughs> All right. yeah, yeah. And I don't even know that Dorkar was like a thing that ever really mattered. It was a minimal influence yeah. when you think about it. Anyway. We uh we did have a flying ship. Yeah. We traveled a lot in a flying machine. Okay. Um 
down, but that blew up I about a, it was like a two bicycle. weeks. That two was... weeks before this narrative begins, we lost the flying oh, machine. Okay. Yeah. That's Otherwise, inconvenient. it's very inconvenient. We, it helped uh, us get and we we of... we crash landed right. You crash landed. Well, I crash landed. Yeah, pretty. Were you drinking? Just on the outskirts no. of uh, yeah. of Myriadis's village, we mm. actually oh, you're crash pretty landed. Close. We were passing by. Mm. Um, right uh, it was really awkward too because Raxan said, "Should we stop in and say hello to Myriadis?" And I said, "Absolutely not." And that's when it started going down. Right. <laughs> uh, something happened to the airship malfunction. No one knows what happened. Actually, I said, "Who?" <laughs> <laughs> So um, uh, we lost the airship. <laughs> That's a real shame. And a lot of the wealth that we had acquired was on board too. So we lost a lot. Keep of in mind, he's again. independently wealthy. He doesn't know uh, that. I'm just letting you know. Who are you? What's this voice? <laughs> <laughs> Where's this come from? The wise talking halfling rogue Grimo Rudefellow, uh, played by Elise Willems over there, uh, returned to his mother and sister who were faithfully awaiting his return to the, his beloved home, the Gyre. Mother and sister? I had no idea. Yeah, most people don't know about Ow. Grimo. He's got a mother and sister. Surprise! Amazing. We all knew that. Grimo's fellow halflings were so impressed by his tales of adventure and fortitude that he's since become an esteemed figure in the local community. A uh, diplomatic way of saying Grimo's now a mob boss. <laughs> Hey, you know... A, a not-to-be-trifled-with mob boss. Grimo, he was a little kid, little punk kid from the streets of the Gyre, okay? His dad left, disappeared. He was there trying to take care of his mother and sister. Uh, 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 well, okay, cat's out of the bag. Grimo's got a mother and sister. He loves them. Whatever, you what know? What a reveal. But now he's come back, and now he's kind of the big bafook. You know what I mean? That was a bad thing. Yeah, is that, that a good thing a, or a bad thing? Ah, well, it's an insult if you're on his bad side. I'll tell you that much. You don't want to get on the bad side of the big buffoon. So what, I'm, what, are you, what are you when you're on the good side? Uh, little buffoon. Maybe you'll find out, Shattercock. <laughs> oh. You but yeah, so Grimo, you know, he's in the gyre. He's taking care of business. Uh, now that you're a big timer in the gyre and uh, no longer just some little street punk, what do your mother and sister think about your new profession? Uh, you don't you don't talk to my mother and sister, do you? Uh, well, uh, I mean, well, Grimo, he's just he's just doing the books. He just he just does the he's an accountant. Okay. He, account, I do the other stuff on the side. Okay, I'm an accountant. That's what I do. It's my job. Don't tell my mother. It's just nothing. Okay. Okay, just just keep it. I won't tell them. Don't tell them nothing. Okay. Uh, have there been any ladies in your life in the last five years? Yeah, too many to count. <laughs> uh, too many accounts, so I couldn't tell you. But I thought you were an accountant. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe Myriadis has more. He what doesn't he? Uh, Don't deflect. <laughs> Myriadis is with, he's not with you right now. Uh, yeah, we're catching up with Grimo. Yeah, I mean, too many to count. Uh, All right. Anything else you want to tell us, Mr. Grimo? No. What's your, what's your favorite sex move? Um, yeah. the uh, perpendicular emphasis on the dick mm -hmm. and the kiss on the dick emphasis, no, emphasis on, on the, the dick, dick. <laughs> perpendicular I want to kiss a dick if you had said kiss on the dick I would have believed Look, you Grima doesn't kiss and tell dicks <laughs> alright uh, Decker Root Kit came into uh, his own as a wizard um, party dancer yeah. <laughs> but still has not found a way to return to his home in no. 1994 <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Decker yeah. wasn't from uh -huh. this world? I know, <laughs> I had my so secrets perfectly. too. Uh, a man trapped in a different time and plane of existence, he's making the best of it. He's now the proprietor of a 24-7 bugbear rave. He's the party king, fueling his patrons with song, mirth, dance, and uh, some, some other substances. <laughs> yeah. Um, Decker, you were once a social outcast. Now you're a party god king. This is true. Do you still plan to find a way home, or will you, will you permanently stay in this alternate reality where you are Mr. Cool? Well, <laughs> did he write that? <laughs> Let me tell you, Dan. Being the coolest guy in the entire world. Mr. Cool. <laughs> I'm just Being Mr. Dr. Cool, as they cool. call me, <laughs> Dr. Cool PhD. Dr. Cool's my dad. It's it's not as great as it sounds. Uh, Decker is at this moment a man adrift. Uh, he lost his greatest companion, his laptop, uh, and he lost his second greatest companion, his cool long trench coat. Uh, both destroyed in an instant when he finally severed the one link he had to his past and his life at home in Ohio. I think. Anyway, so yeah, now he. Shortly thereafter, uh, the events we have, we have just uh, gotten out of, he decided to seek meaning in a roving 24-hour party orbiting, the, orbiting above the earth with all of his bugbear pals. But he secretly suspects that maybe these, these bugbears are just hanging around because he keeps the, uh, the substances flowing. But that doesn't matter to a man without, without a direction. He's just enjoying the moment as the moments come and go. He sees his uh, bleach tips getting bleacher in the mirror and he wonders where his life's going. 
maybe maybe the 24-hour party isn't satisfying him anymore. Oh, man. Maybe he thought that uh, being the world's premier party mancer was enough after banging and partying for 10,000 years in the party dimension. Kind of got banged. <laughs> after yeah, 10,000 10, years, you're cool. Five more five was, was too past much. the limit. Yeah, 10,005. <laughs> turns out that's when, uh, that's when you hit that uh, like 10 millennia uh, itch is it's what like, they call it. It's like the biography of Skrillex. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it seems fun in games, but deep down, he's a complex character. It's, it's empty. A lot, of, a lot of feelings. So, uh, no. Sorry if you got some more. <laughs> oh, I can keep going if you want me to. Uh, yeah, yeah. I cut in. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta stop him. There, there have been some whispers that your rave is a cover for a cult that you're starting. Are, are there any rumor, uh, truth to those rumors? Listen, no one starts a cult. Just someone happens to have a message that people need to hear. And when that person puts that message into the world and people band around it and support and lift up that person, that's not starting a cult, all right? That's helping people. It's always, he's just trying to help people. That's it. Maybe he's trying to find some meaning in that. And also get people to do stuff for him when he wants it to be done. But that's when people like you and they want to help you out, they'll do stuff for you. Don't you just give all the bugbears drugs? Yes, I do that a lot. Keeps them docile. And they really enjoy my label. I started a label. I don't know if you knew that. It's mostly just me recreating in, uh, industrial hits of the early 90s. What's the on, name of the label? Oh, geez. Mm. Call it Nine Inch Tails. I was thinking, yeah. I was going to go 10 inch nails. <laughs> for the bug good bears. Too. Uh, what are bug bears? I don't know. Okay. I know they have tails. Nine inch tails. There you go. It's great. It's great. Everyone loves it. It's really, it's really hip. It's uh, the youths are digging it. Okay. It's the sound of the future. That's what I say because I, I know it is. <laughs> but I don't tell them that. That's a smart business, by the way. In case you guys didn't know. Keeping secrets. So yeah, I, um, I'm dropping EPs every other week. That's a lot of music. You can crank it out when you got, a, when you got the mind for it. And the drug's coursing through your veins at all times. So yeah, it's 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 everything you could expect, but somehow it's just a little bit hollow. Last but not least, we have the deadly tiefling sorceress Shattercock, played by Mr. Bruce Green. Hello! <laughs> Shattercock left the battlefield behind to fulfill a lifelong fantasy of settling down with a beautiful orc lady. The two found a small cottage in a quiet clearing where they are quite happy. Yeah, Shattercock, uh, she had a friend from previous seasons. Her name was Koja. Uh, she was an orc lady that we had met along the way. She was part of the orc tribe that we banded together with to fight monsters and be heroes. And uh, and Shattercock took a liking to Koja. I believe it was on the party boat. Uh, during that party is when they first fell in love. And they, they met eyes and they danced and writhed and uh, thrusted and ground all over. Oh, that's Koja. Um, there she is. Uh, Shattercock has always been a little jealous of Koja. Uh, because she's always liked Koja's uh, hips, and <laughs> sure, <laughs> that's what I think of women. By the way, just so you know. <laughs> oh my God, your hips! Um, <laughs> that drew her. <laughs> that drew her to Koja because she. It, look, if she can't, you know, you can't beat him. You got to join him. So that's her sexual orientation. If you can't beat him, join him. Nice. If you can't out fuck him, fuck him. Exactly. Uh, Bruce couldn't fathom being with a male. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, absolutely. Are you kidding? What's better than one woman? Two. Two. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, two. That's all right. They've just been kind of whiling the time away out in, the, out in that cottage. Uh, they've, been, they've been trying to get pregnant, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but it ain't working. Figure it out. <laughs> it ain't working. No matter how hard they grind those things together, <laughs> nothing's happening. The show is somehow progressive and just not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's terrible. Mm. Uh, so do you miss the life of adventure, the thrill of battle? Shattercock does. Uh, uh, do I, I'm not going to answer. Yeah, I absolutely miss the life adventure. But you know what's better than <laughs> you know what's better than grinding away on the mountain trails? Grinding away on Koja oh, on her happy trail. <laughs> uh, on Koja's happy trail, and uh, Shattercock misses it. But she's. I'm really in love with Koja. That's that's sweet. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it smells like a fish market in their cabin. They're clean. Jeez. Spraying everywhere. You can't, can't wash the inside. Yeah. <laughs> Gets all in the wood. So uh, our story starts uh, in Myriadis' little village of Yudrul. Okay. Uh, or actually, it's, it's underneath the Yudrul Mountains, excuse me, right over here. We are in the southeastern section of uh, Patlarboria. Uh, yeah, we're going to get going. I uh, rule. Yeah, drool. Good Let's one. Here. Whoa, Whoa, what the hell? The oh, Ewok so, village. Hidden away in the deep caverns of the mountains of Yudrul, the dwarves spend their days extracting precious treasures from the mines below 
and enjoy their nights at the local inn with a cup of mead in hand. <laughs> There he One, is. There we go. That's where he is. <laughs> One morning, Mayor Muriatis is seated in his hall knitting sweaters for the young dwarf orphans oh. when a strange elf girl <laughs> arrives begging for his audience. Are you knitting? Sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, Here. I'll get you another pencil. He's knitting. Here, I'll, I'll get you one. Oh, okay. okay. Now it. knit. <laughs> yep. Stirring a salad. That's He's so masculine. <laughs> I don't know how to knit. Um, so yeah, so this uh, young girl arrives uh, begging an audience. The raven-haired young elf rides confidently atop an old elk with glowing eyes. There's something foreign about her, both in appearance and demeanor. She enters the room as a noble would. Your guards attempt to send her away, but she charges through and demands to speak with you. I beg an audience, my lord. Let her, let her speak. <laughs> what <laughs> say you? <laughs> <laughs> just still knitting. So yeah, yeah. The elk kind of sweater is just like oh, <laughs> just a pile of really bad. One arm, another arm. I'm getting better. I'm learning. All right. <laughs> Those poor orphans. The orphans are disfigured. Yeah, they, they, makes sense. Beggars can't be choosers. I mean, come on, they literally are. Um, no, I got elected. Uh, no. What do you guys want? Like a sweater with two armholes? Come Look, on. You don't even have parents. Why don't you just shut up and take the sweater? <laughs> so the elk kind of sticks one of its legs out and moves kind of past the, all the guards and steps in front of Miriam. On his on his throne. Gre- <clears throat> oh boy! <laughs> Sorry. You all right? Greetings, O oh great Myriadis O'Probles. Oh My name is Nima Harkur. I am here in desperate cause to beg your assistance. Nima kicks her leg backwards over the elk, drops to the ground, kind of slides off real smooth. I live with my father in the castle Darkhaven, south of your river, beyond the sprawling woods. The Baron Walter Grinamorte is a good man, kind to the townspe- townspeople of our home, Wallachia, and, our, ugh, and a loving father, albeit lonely since my mother's passing. About six months ago, a strange old woman arrived at our castle. She and my father had a heated exchange, however, I do not know what it was regarding. He sent her away. Now I find my father to be a changed man. He retreats from human contact and prowls the underground, muttering to himself. Two days ago, he disappeared altogether into the bowels of our castle, a labyrinth that spans miles below the Earth's surface. Songs are sung and tales are told of you, brave Myriadis, you and your band of noble adventurers. I beg you to come to Wallachia and help me save my father. I will offer you anything your heart desires, treasure, power, my hand in marriage, maybe. Look how tiny she is. Your father was the Baron? Or is the Baron? My father is the Baron. Oh. Do you, like that? Do you like sweaters? Walter. Because <laughs> ain't get one. This is a trademark, <laughs> trademark questions from Mary. Which one's the father? <laughs> you know how to well, oh, wise mayor. <laughs> yeah. Won't you help me please rescue my father? I do have sweaters to knit. <laughs> but I'm, oh, I'm real me, busy here. Me and Mary uh, Me and who, go, who, who goes there? It is I, uh, the orphan uh, puppy. <laughs> Look her in the still, eyes, she's Mary. Still her name. <laughs> yes. For the sweaters, ready for this winter in the mines. You have us working so hard. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> He's a slave driver. <laughs> it's perhaps a sweater, or would a helper? Puppy, yeah, here this orphan. one's kind of mostly done. <laughs> <laughs> throw oh, it to her. Her. Oh, Now I know why you won by a landslide. Thank you. Thank you. Watch out for those landslides in the mine over there. I will. Thank you for the sweat house. <laughs> carries it away. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you gotta mine them out. <laughs> they travel by landslide. <laughs> Two of Mary- Mariatis' uh, guards burst through the door and run up to his throne. <laughs> Punch Poppy in the stomach and drag her <laughs> 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 yeah. How'd you get out of the mines? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry to interrupt Mariatis O'Probbles. Uh, but we have a matter on our hands that also demands your attention immediately. And they, they turn to, to Nima and pardon us, ma'am. Last night, our hunters were out in the countryside when they picked up two mercenaries who were burning child killers at the stake. Morality aside, isn't it your opinion that criminals should be tried and punished within a court of law, and it was not up to these men to take the law into their own hands? The other dwarf kind of steps up. We have thrown the vigilantes into our prison cells, but they're causing quite a scene. They are quite drunk and keep demanding to speak to the Colonel King. Um, I guess that's you. Please uh, come and help us settle this. You got it. Well, they were they were burning child killers. <laughs> you got it. That doesn't uh, sound what? so bad, but 
<laughs> anyway, <laughs> yes, let's go. That, but then, but then uh, <laughs> Miriatus' advisor steps in and goes, <laughs> Oh. Mayor Miri, <laughs> don't you feel like burning child killers is beyond the law's reach? By technicality, maybe, but I agree with them doing it. But <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, let's go deal with them. Unfortunately, where they did the burning was near the storehouses where all your sweaters were being kept. <laughs> oh, hundreds of them that you had already. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're pretty bad. Hard <laughs> made so, some with more than four or five sleeves, even, sir. <laughs> it yeah. set us back months. Well, I needed to get better at knitting anyway. <laughs> quite uh, right, quite. That's the maddest answer I've ever heard. Yeah, why don't you? Why don't you come with us, Nima, and we'll uh, see what these ruffians are about. We can deal with two things at once. Right before they come leave. Along. Right before they leave, you yep. hear a voice from the back. <laughs> Your wife appears oh, to be no. calling you, sir. Marietta's! I'm soaking <laughs> wet! And I need to be fucked! <laughs> she just. We haven't had a kid yet! When she describes her moisture, sir, I believe she's referring to her crotch. Get back here and do your husbandly duty! <laughs> He's looking, he's looking at that paper. Like, I understand that, that I you know, have it's on there for you. <laughs> it looks bad politically to not seal the marriage. Uh, <laughs> I don't have a wife. You're a widow. I took in, so I'll, I'll be back later. It is legally binding, he's though, lying. sir. <laughs> we married thirty years ago. <laughs> I'm just going to run out the door with my guards <laughs> toward the, uh, the jailhouse. Right. So, yeah, uh, as, as your wife or maybe not wife is screaming, you guys uh, rush down a few cave passages, past the armory, the treasure vault, and you come to the cells. You hear a loud, constant banging noise. Uh, your captives are trying to kick the cell door down. Uh, you turn a corner and immediately recognize your old cohorts, Derek and Raxon, trying to bash down the cell door. Derek looks up and sees uh, Miri and goes, Well, look who came crawling back. <laughs> 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 Miri, he just kind of <laughs> stares kind of blankly for like a good 10 seconds and just kind of utters like, No. <laughs> I, uh, he really hated you all. I was just so happy to be rid and of I, you. I, I notice he's wearing, he's holding one of those sweaters in his hands. Is all go, what you've got there? A yak shawl? Yeah, I made Is it. Is that a shawl for a yak? <laughs> Why are you talking like that? What? <laughs> it's been five years, Millie. I've developed this outrageous accent. <laughs> Here, I made this for you, and I give it. I give it to Raxon. Okay, the, um, the magic sweater makes my uh, accent go away. Oh, hey, thanks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't fit very well. <laughs> no. It was made for a dwarf, right? Yeah. To get along. So sweater. you guys were burning child killers? Is that what I hear? Well, Is that right? We had good we, reason. Here, come, yes. come in and sit a spell. In our uh, so, come into the come into my our office, <laughs> and we'll te- we'll weave you a tail like a sweater you've never seen. We open the cell door for him. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we got clash slamage. <laughs> yeah, I'm like what? Yeah. Uh, Slam it. Yeah, was, and then I, we rip the shell, cell door <laughs> off together and we set it down. Yeah, you sit down. Come in, have yep. a seat. We'll tell you the whole thing. Barkeep, two more. <laughs> You're in a jail. <laughs> yeah. It's been a while since we've seen each other. You're looking. Eh. Hmm. Um, but we've been roaming the countryside, acquiring immense wealth, working as vigilantes for hire. It just so happened that we were traveling through your land. I suppose it's your land. What do you do here? I'm in charge. I don't care. Uh, so you're traveling through your land, and we came across this storehouse that had the ugliest sweaters we'd ever seen. And we said, we have to destroy these. We thought it was an orc hideout. We thought it was an orc hideout. Who would make such hideous monstrosities? We thought that's where they hid their... Uh, rejected clothing. So we did what we normally do, which was we started drinking. And then one thing, like some other guy showed up and they said, hey, those sweaters are for children or something. So we burned them. <laughs> <laughs> we burned them. And the guys, the guys, they ran into the thing. They were like, yeah, don't do this. Mm-hmm. We have to use it for the children we want to get. And so, so they're in there and we go, I don't know. 
I think I fell asleep. We woke up. I, yeah. I just remember the smell. The smell was terrible. It was like gingerbread. It was like gingerbread. It was like the mixing a, like yaks wool mm. and gingerbread all burnt up. We've kept throwing up. So you're a mayor. How's that? So Nima, I'd vote for you. <laughs> Nima, Nima steps up and uh, kind of to Miri. She's telling the elk. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, perhaps, uh, Mariatus, you could strike some sort of deal with your, your old friends to get them to join you and, and help you solve the problems of I, my land. I look at her and go, little young, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I am 18 years old. That's the attitude of a girl that knows what she wants. I don't know which one's hitting below the belt, but you're doing good. I'm going to take it as a sign. I wasn't very good at those sweaters. Um, <laughs> you guys want to help me in exchange for pardon to help this uh, help this youngster out? Her dad's gone missing or something. He wants us to pardon him. You want us to set you free <laughs> and break you out of jail. We can That's do that way. for you, That's but it's going to cost you. We're going to need some gold. How well you get some gold in this dwarf village? You guys dig for stuff. Yeah, it's not gold though. It's mostly like various ores and. Stuff, not gold. Um, I'm setting you free. The door is open. Sure, whatever. Yeah, he we open the door. How you got in here? Because we said let you in. We want to get you out of jail, Mary. I think it's person of the I'll mind. give you half of what I find along the way. Does that extend to plant life and maybe anything that's knitted? Yes. What if it's already half a sweater? Then you get a quarter of it. That's good math. Come here. Let's have a talk. Okay. All right, so it's, it's, I mean, we could, could go on for a while. Let's go for a bit. Do you think you're going somewhere where gold will be? I think so. I'm not positive though. I can't promise anything. Nima might know more. I turn to the elk and I go, Nima, <laughs> where's the gold? Is there we heading to a place where the gold? Is there some sort of reward? Oh, it, yeah, it goes. Let's just stop. Yeah, actual Nima. My father is extremely rich. We'll do it, and we'll just take half. You said half? Yep. Very well. We will get you free from jail. Follow us. All right. And then we walk out of the cell. So, so as you, you, you hear this terrible crashing sound, uh, it's deafening, and the entire mountain starts to shake that you're in. Uh, the ground's trembling beneath your feet, and you rush outside to, to find out what's going on. You find that a large blimp has collided with the mountain peak. Upon uh, you walk a lot closer, upon closer inspection, you see colored lights flashing inside the blimp and hear loud, blaring, beating music. I got, I'm yelling, shark! <laughs> nice. <laughs> wow. Out now, from, <clears throat> did out you find the art and then write around it, or <laughs> was it the other way around? We'll have to ask our art guy. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Out from the blimp stumble a group of inebriated bugbears. Then a man... A man in white slowly emerges from a cloud of smoke. It's Decker Root Kit. His blimp is totaled. Blood coming off my face. I stumble a bit. I throw a wad of gold over my over my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> and then I try to take off running and just collapse into the snow. <laughs> I turn to Miri and I go, 60%. I go, 55. I don't, I don't even hear him. I'm 54. Just, I'm Deal. just staring <laughs> deadly at Decker and... I utter no. Yeah, the, the fire from the crash starts to actually ignite all these really valuable trees that are on top of your mountain as well. Valuable <laughs> trees. My uh, my jacket was on fire, so I shuffle it, shuffle it off to reveal a uh, silk button up with flames all over it. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it silk? Because <laughs> it's a very voluptuous kind of fabric. Okay. It fits my my hedonistic lifestyle. And I've got red rimmed plastic circular glasses and how hair far buttoned up. up is it? Oh, it's around about here. Okay. So there's a lot. Could of, you have one of those Doctor Seuss hats? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've got them. I'm just not wearing one. Like <laughs> <laughs> it fell off in the crash. I gotta get up. Like, oh fuck, 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 fuck! And I, like, get up again and start trying to stumble away from it. Oh, we gotta get out of here. We gotta get out of here. And I'm just like taking plastic baggies of stuff and like throwing them in bushes and shrubs as I'm running. A <laughs> uh, gaggle of orphans. Uh, run out of the mountainside led by Poppy. Yeah. Oh, maybe you Oh, just... great, kids. Here, take this. What? <laughs> Shoving little plastic Swallow baggies this. in your hands, yeah. They start, the orphans start swallowing. Oh, great. No, that's bags. perfect. That's perfect. Please. Okay. Oh, maybe, God. Maybe, 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 Eddie, do you want us to do this? 
Is Myriad is here? What? what yeah, yeah. You guys are all outside. I'm oh, just okay. staring like in disbelief. Like, right. how you, are they all back? Did you create the fire for us, Mr. Myriadis? Because you knew how horrid your sweaters were. Yes. Oh, thank you, Mary Myriadis. And they run off. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. I'll protect you. I'll get these. I'm going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, go, I, 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 go, I nudge Mary. I go, hey, how many child killers do you think is in that blimp? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you guys now see Decker. Are you not going to react at all to your favorite? Well, that's why I raised chum? the price. Oh. That's yeah, why I changed yeah. the price. I'm staring deadly at him. I just can't, like, blankly. I'm just breathing heavy. <sighs> and then I roll over and throw up. <clears throat> and then, like, makes a, it starts sinking into the snow because it's all warm. I'm like, ah, <clears throat> wait a minute. And I stand up, all shaky, fall down again, get back up. I've got a, I've got an escape plan. And then I, I see Mary and I'm like, ah, oh, shit. And I, uh, I stumble towards him, I'm like Mary, Mary, you got to save me. I can't drive right now, and I got to get out of here, like now. Mary, you got to come with me, and I just start dragging him towards the wreckage. So, uh, Chubbers the bugbear approaches Decker. <laughs> hey, man, y- you still holding? I need some more of this fantasy. Oh shit! I'm, I'm, I'm starting to come, come down hard, bro. Hey, Ch- Chubbers. Hey, uh, hey, man, you're you know you're cool, and I like that. I'm cool too. We get each other on that regard. I got a lot of that. Yes, I do. Not run out at all, I promise. But I'm holding it with some orphans right now. <laughs> so uh, I was going to move the party into the dwarf land. That's why we're here. I knew that. My buddy here, Mary, said that we could come over here and party here. So we're going to party here, and I promise I'll be here forever. I didn't. He did say that. Uh, he's very honest, and he always tells the truth, so we can do that. Uh, so I already sent all of that with, with the children. Go find them and bug them about that because I got to... I gotta go get more drugs. Decker, you've changed, bro. You used to be all about the flow, all about the party. Now you're acting like some sort of dweeb. Hey, fuck off, man. Give me some of that fantasy fuck right off. now, or we're gonna throw it down. It's been a hard five years. Go after the children, I gotta get out of here. I don't have any insurance on this thing. So Chubbers starts going in your pockets, like in, in, trying trying to find anything he can. Slapping him off. Stop it, stop it. Chubbers, fuck you. I poke him in the eye. Another bugbear comes <laughs> out. Where are yeah. the pals? The bugbears are all kind of gathering themselves and getting it together. They're all ro- coming down hard and sobering up yeah. seriously right now. Um, and they're looking at you guys extremely angry. There's probably about 20 of them. While all this is happening, uh, Derek reaches through his like sack. And he pulls out a, a like a wanted poster. And it says wanted. And it's an image of Decker. Only it's like a hideous drawing of this guy with like <laughs> spiky blonde hair and everything like that. And it's also in the image, he's also fighting off bugbears. <laughs> <laughs> and it said like it says like reward ten thousand gold or something like that. And I go and I'm go, we found him. And I go, it's Grimo. No. Oh. <laughs> 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 that's the guy. What guy? That's that's Decker. Remember the guy from um, that quest? He was like stupid drummer? and then he got worse. <laughs> <laughs> narrow it down. <laughs> anyway, this is the guy from the picture. Well, how that much we is it got worth? 10,000 gold. We could do that. We should do that. We should ask for more. We should do that. Mary, mm. double it. <laughs> 50% is technically half, which that is, means that's not times my... two times the no. reward. 20,000 gold. It's not my wanted poster. I'm not doing it. Uh, let's just say we'll gather it will. along the way. Let's go. I, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you, you guys <laughs> start to get surrounded by, uh, in a circle, or maybe half circle, uh, you know, say you're, here's the wreckage, here's you guys, these bugbears are starting yeah. to circle you, and uh, they're joined by some orphans that are starting to really rage out. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> but they're they're, they're encro- all on 80. <clears throat> they're yeah. encroaching on you. And uh, Decker, in case your memory isn't what it used to be, you were once so smart and cool that you have a backup plan in case of emergency sobering of customers. Absolutely do. You actually have a mini blimp tucked away inside the major blimp that probably survived the crash. So I'm trying to get Mary to (laughs) drive it. Mr. Mayor! (laughs) Mayor Mary! Mayor! There's a problem! (laughs) It's your your vizier. Your your advisor, yeah. Okay. There's a problem that... (laughs) <laughs> that elk shit in the, <laughs> shit in the hall. <laughs> That's all right. We don't have anyone that can tolerate the smell of crap enough to clean it up. <laughs> uh, I just like, I push the advisor back and I get right in your face and you can like, my eyes are really bloodshot and there's blood coming out of my nose and my ears. Uh, I'm like, don't listen to him. We got to go right now. You have never seen a bugbear come off this shit. It's bad. Your wife. Your wife, Mary. Mary! She's not my wife. Mary! She's destroying the village. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Mary! Mr. Mary, what is happening to me? 
So, so, I, so I, they're, I, they're, I, they're, I address the bugbears. Goes, bug, fellow bugbears. <laughs> he's, he's not a fellow. <laughs> the, the treasure, <laughs> the treasure. What you see is at Mary's house. <laughs> Raxan, they're not going to listen to you. They're going to eat your skin. Upstairs, we got to go. There's so much. Are they? I at, shove some snow yeah. into a baggie and I'm like. Go get it, fuckers! <laughs> <laughs> They're distracted by that for a minute. We gotta go! And, and Raxon's pointing, so they tur- for a brief moment, they kind of turn around uh, amongst the chaos of, Mir- of uh, Miri's maybe wife and all these... Or- everyone's just yelling at Miri, wanting something from him. Uh, Nima's chiming in, saying, we should go. We, uh, we, we need to get to my homeland. You must stay and further establish policy <laughs> in our village. Help me save my father. The elections are just around Help the corner. Help me save my father. <laughs> What's <laughs> every millennia? So go ahead and uh, <laughs> maybe one of the orphans, or maybe you can learn to clean up the crap and just elect a new mayor. I'm gonna protect you all. We gotta go. Uh, and no, I just try and like start. Where's this mini? Where's this mini? Wreckage. Where's this mini blimp? Uh, our, I know. I know. Because <laughs> there's like smoke every. Ah! <laughs> 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 like, stumbling down the hallway. <laughs> I'm like coughing up a little bit as I. <laughs> Uh, like spitting out teeth and stuff. Ah, 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 it's through here, I think. Ah, ah. And I like kick open a door to uh it's like it's like a uh, red velvet everywhere. There's nice circular couches. There's a crystal chandelier in there. Um it's playing one of my records, which is uh it's just like eight vocal tracks of me um singing closer, um, you know, by nine inch tails. Uh so it's it's a pretty cool, chill place to hang out. Uh and I'm like, oh thank god. I just kind of hit the ground kind of crawl forward on all fours and start like go up to the deck and start flipping switches and stuff. Like, Mary, get in here. Turn in some stuff. Mary! Yes? All right, sit down. All right. I don't know what how to fly. That's okay. You don't fly with your hands. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you fly with your heart. Yeah, what do you fly with? <laughs> so <laughs> I take the cover off the seat and there's a joystick right in the middle. What the hell is that? Mary, you got to sit down right now. Take off your pants. Just sit on it. I'm not going to. No. I'll sit. Mary, you have to sit right it's now. Compromise. Mary, do it. This is part of life. Does he drive the mini blimp with his, his asshole? A joystick up no, his ass? That's a prank. You're pranking him? <laughs> yeah, so he sits down on it. I'm like, <laughs> I like that Lord's oh, like, And then he sits down on it. I thought you were telling me to sit in the seat and take my pants off just to. Do then he wants you to sit on the joystick. Yeah. But he's oh. pranking you. Got it. Apparently. All right, so uh-huh. the mini blimp kind of just <laughs> shoots out the side of, of the regular blimp. Mary, come back! <laughs> Mary! So a, a landslide starts to shake oh, no. at the top oh, of the no. mountain, starts coming down in your direction. <laughs> Not again! You never me. Oh, the voices! So ev- everybody, including the bugbears and the orphans and your wife and your vi- they're all kind of chasing after the blimp uh, that Decker and Miri are floating. It's got flame decals on maybe the side. Five feet above the air in and. I don't know what you guys are doing. I mean, we're holding on to the outside, right? Okay. Yeah. 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 There's a little rope dangling down. We're just like, it's one of those ladders. We're just yeah, holding yeah. on like, huh, we should probably get inside. We'll just get a little closer. <laughs> we'll ride this out, and then we'll get the 10,000 gold reward. Good plan. <laughs> so the, the blimp floats away uh, with you guys t- dangling from uh, the rope ladder, and the land side kind of wipes away a bunch of the orphans and bugbears. Oh, oh gosh. Mary's wife, too? We don't know about her. They could have. The orphans could have made it, but they were... Uh, the sweaters are too heavy. <laughs> oh, so they oh couldn't, no. I imagine uh, Marietta's wife too. She she was chasing him, but she was so big and she's in a wheelbarrow and someone was oh, <laughs> running her down. I'm trying to help on the landslide. <laughs> 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 Fuck me! <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, maybe the wife chases after him the whole season. Wait, what happened to oh, that? What happened to the elk? I'm going to bring her back. Don't what happened worry. to the elk chick? Uh, oh, they. Um, Where's they, the elk? Yeah, that's what the we elk asked and Nima once hopped we're... up into yeah, the basket as, as it took the off. They're, they're with you. Okay. Once we're in the air, Decker's like, fuck me. Hit, like, slumps against a wall, goes up to a, like a, a cute little mini bar, pops open the bottle of something, like, pours it, and then just takes the bottle. It's like some smoking black liquid. He takes a swig off of it, immediately passes out, drops the bottle on the floor. Real quick, we're outside the window. So you're passed out. Yeah. Let us in. Falls over. Hey! Mary! <laughs> yeah. Open the door. I'm just gonna start kind of pulling levers and Mary got the joystick buttons. out of your ass and open the door. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm flying it like <laughs> uh, so I kick Decker, try to wake him up. I don't know if it works. <coughs> roll roll a die. I'm I'm doing this. I want to wake him up. I got a six. All right, help. Six. But it's backwards. Yeah, you're not waking him up. Right, he's, he's out, out cold. Yeah, he's passed out. Uh, so uh, the elk kind of just 
kicks the little door open. <laughs> okay. so oh, that all right, we come in. We have these shitty sweaters on. <laughs> <laughs> I have an extra arm coming up <laughs> the center of the chest. Mine has a, ta- a th- slot for my tail. <laughs> so you guys are traveling for what feels like days. It's not days. At first, you were probably down with Decker's DJ skills, but you soon grew tired of his shtick. Soon. Um, so uh, Nima uh, walks up to Decker and goes, so you know the location of the gyre. You know the voice down there. You, you know how to get us to the it's gyre. Too loud. It's too loud. And your fellow adventurer, Grimo, yeah. we're getting the gang back together. How, how do you know how to get there? Oh. <clears throat> I've, I've been around. Okay. I'm kind of a cool guy. Uh, I partied everywhere, and I owe a lot of money there, so I know to never go back. Uh, let me tell you, the ecstasy is not free, and uh, there's some very angry, very sober men who are going to do bad things to me if we go back there. So where are we headed? The, the gyre. Please. Fuck! Do you have a map or something? Yeah. Why are we going there? To get your to get little Grimo. We're getting the gang back together. Why? What? While you were asleep, Myriadis talked about the quest that we went on before, and now Nima's got it in its head in her head. He wouldn't shut up. He would not shut up he about it. Like honestly, he, he just straight. talking, talking, talking over and over. Like, Please stop talking. I had to days. stay awake. I'm flying this Every thing day. for days. <laughs> yeah, he's, going on. He's controlling with his I mean, ass. You remember him? He's quite the talker. <laughs> yeah. And he wouldn't yeah, shut up just, about it. So now. Long tails. She has it in her head that the only heroes that can save her father, or something, are uh, the ones that saved Gael. Yeah, the old gang that saved the world. She doesn't know you the guys whole story, though. Mostly the fingering. <laughs> well, yeah, that's right. Decker kind of sways. Another adventure, huh? Mm. Walks up to the mini bar, pours a drink, passes out. <laughs> <No. laughs> oh. he, he's. He mentally recounts the five long years of, of nonstop partying and how ultimately hollow he felt. He says, you know what? I'll do it. We're already heading there. Yeah. <laughs> they, they all found the map. I think, I think we're here. <laughs> oh. So yeah, you guys arrived to the gyre. Um, the gyre is not oh exactly gosh. how Grimo described it uh, over the past few seasons. It's a shithole. <laughs> the small halfling homes are decrepit and dilapidated, most in severe states of ruin Depression. and disrepair. In place of grass or dirt, the streets and yards are covered in cigarette butts. The, s- <laughs> the sky is filled with smoke, so much so that you have a tough time landing the blimp. Uh, Decker, or actually Miri, flying the blimp. Roll a 20. 14. All right, yeah, you actually come down for a pretty smooth landing. He's a natural. With his ass. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> As you walk through the streets, you're met with sneers and scowls. Some of the halflings run into their homes and slam the door behind them when they see you. The town cheermeister, Fatty Lipowitz, whispers to his cronies, pointing in your direction and flicking a cigarette. A mule spits in your general direction. A small, wiry little halfling kid with a dirty face and no shirt runs up and kicks Derek in the shin. Get lost, you lanky bastard. No one wants your tall ass around the gyre. Ow! Get out of here. Just kick him back. These little shits will get all over you if you don't show them something. Uh, Can I grab the kid, the halfling, by by the scruff and say, like, like... I should burn your murderer alive. <laughs> <laughs> let go of me, you little bastard. You big bastard. You know, I'll let go of you. How about I just cut your little tongue out and then we'll see who you're calling a bastard. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Just let me go. All we'll, right. I'll be, we'll, now start cool. running. Start uh, running. Uh, I'm, you're holding me in the air. Start running your feet like you're kicking. running. And I'm going to set you down. And I want to see you run off because okay. that'll be funny. Okay. All right. And go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so you guys are wandering the uh, beautiful streets of the gyre. Grimo. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the most Grimo calling for him. I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to not be noticed so my legs don't get cracked. Wearing a flame silk shirt, red glasses, and bleach tips. Trying to, you know, blend in. You know how it is. Uh, I guess I just trying to blend in. I guess I knock on a random door and go. Excuse me. Hello there. Yes, big man. I put my foot in the door. <laughs> Jam in your head. I, uh, I'm sorry. That was a ruse. Uh, we're looking for uh, a man named Grimo. Have you heard of it? Grimo Rudefellow. I don't. Last, re- name. last name. Was that the last name? Anyone got a last name? Mary. No idea. Was that the last name? I didn't I even know. Grimo so. is a common name in the gyre. There's right. like 3,000 Grimos oh, here. Sounds right. I think so. Uh, Let's go with it. 
how much sex has he had? Probably a lot. He's a big shot around here nowadays. Can't be him. It wouldn't be him. No. It can't be him. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a little kid actually runs out and kicks Decker in the shin and runs away. God fucking damn it! Nah, serves you right. Ah! Uh, well, he had. A, I'm trying to remember the character. He had a real. He had a real thing for red women. Hmm. Does it ring a bell? Yeah. So you're you are looking for Grimo Rootfellow. He. Um, he he, he has pull around here now. Um, after. His He's legends are personally saving what the is he, world. What does he pull? Like a trow or a, what uh, is he like a donkey more like, type job? More like favors and um, like a know, like a prostitute job, jobs. Definitely prostitute. Prostitute. Probably. Okay. Wh- which whorehouse does he work in? It's the purple one, like four doors down, the right across the street. Whorehouse. Purple Got whorehouse. It. We're on our way. Thank you so much for your time. And I took my trilby. Yeah. <laughs> I take my briefcase. And you put your hand out for, for money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shake my knife. Thank you, sirs. Guys, do me a, kick the door a little bit. May have a history here. Do me a favor. Just don't drop my name. Okay. Because it might complicate things. I got a bit of a tab. You got a Decker root kit. <laughs> I, guess, I guess get out of your system now. Yeah, that makes sense. Another kid runs up and kicks you in the shin. Motherfucker! God, I told you to kick them, man. They're gonna be after me all day now. I noticed there's a convenience store, and it's like those ones that sell like key chain, uh, chi- uh, keychains with like names on it. And there's one that says Decker root kit on it. Yeah. But it's a shirt. <laughs> I, got, I got this for you, Decker. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Put it on over my flame decal. <laughs> Not looking at it. Yeah. It's been a while since I've had a friend. None of those bugbears ever got me a present. So. uh Dirk goes up to the purple door, bangs on it. Okay, it opens right up. And there's a there's a man standing in the center, sunglasses, and just staring straight ahead, doesn't move. Just standing in the doorway. Mm-hmm. So we're looking for uh, a little annoying guy. Sorry, that's vague. We're looking for a average height, leather jacket wearing, greased up, grease smoky. You notice you notice everything you're saying. He's not comprehending, staring straight ahead. You can't see his eyes. Who wanna talk like this? A little bit. <laughs> kind of. Kind of. Yeah. He's got a weird. It's been a long time. He or she has a weird accent. It's hard. Loves horses. He pulls out something from his pocket. It looks like a weapon. And he goes like this. He whips it out. And it extends. And he taps in front of him. Okay. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah. He's deaf. A wizard. <laughs> <laughs> deaf wizard. Do you know uh, of this man, woman, thing? Eventually he, he hits Derek. Who the hell? Oh, no. no. Who the hell? Um, I, uh. Dicker's just laughing in the back. You know what, maybe this is the wrong house. Who did? You do, you do notice a purple building right next to that one that says whorehouse on it. And the uh, one that you're under says blind I, I guy I think house. the blind it says deaf. blind deaf guy house. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I take his other hand and I put it on Miri's face and I go, it is I, your son. <laughs> oh, I'm, son. I'm back after all these years. <laughs> but I, so but I, I think he's deaf, so I'm like, fuck me. <laughs> I'm like, I'm speaking it on his face so he can hear the reverberation yeah. on his bones so he can kind of yeah, feel yeah, it in his head. Uh-huh. And then, so I'm like, bah, 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 yeah. And then, and, and Derek takes, takes his other hand, takes his other hand and goes, uh, he'll make you a sweater. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so cool. So, Mary, can you handle what the sweater thing What in the buffook is going on out here? Boo! <laughs> Grimo, great. We're looking for someone. Uh, Have you seen Grimo? Hi, we're looking for Grimo. <laughs> Charlie, you're my bodyguard. Why are you letting these people through? Who did that? <laughs> <laughs> Who did Charlie! asking who said that. We felt the vibration! If we had not come to the door, it would still be, who did this? <laughs> Charlie, he has five bucks. Go feel the, the tits of the one with the raised areolas. Oh, thank you both. <laughs> that was a one. <laughs> Go to the whorehouse, come uh, on. He walks away. Hello, sir. We are looking for Grimo Rude Fellow. You know I am Grimo, rude fellow. Uh, Grimo was taller yeah. than that, I thought. Uh, jovial, yeah. usually naked, yeah. flaccid. Yeah. Didn't oh, smoke. Talk she died. like that. Decker grabbed a copy of the Gyro Herald and held it up so you can't see his face, but he's still wearing the shirt. This is why I'm Decker. What in the buffook 
are all my favorite friends doing here to see Grimo? Oh, hey, Grimo. Yeah. Grimo, he grabs, he grabs, uh, Derek, around sure that that uh, Derek around the waist. Grabs Derek around the waist and he I squeezes so. his tail. Is, yeah. that, is this Miriadis? Wouldn't yeah. grabbing him around the waist at your height be like right in his dick? Yeah, he squ dick, squeezes dick his dick tail. Yeah. I thought Grimo was the one without a hand. Yeah. That wasn't, was that Grimo with the stick? With, with Roxanne, he gives him a hearty handshake. Yeah, we're just so like, I don't know who this is. Is this? With, who? With, uh, ah, yeah. With, with Miri. Oh, great to see you. Time or a short yeah. time? Good to see you. This is Derek. Derek, hey, meet hey, my guys. friend. Derek, nice to meet you. Guys, he goes and gives Miri a chest bump. Give him a little chest bump because they're this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, similar buddies. height. This is, similar this height. is Miriadis. Why don't you say your name? God, Grimo. It's a gr okay, you guys always have a new good time. It. I forgot it as is, soon as I heard it. This is what best friends do. This is what best friends do. I, I can't believe it's been five years. I can't believe you guys will come all the way here just to see me. I got Miri, Raxan, Derek. I, uh, excuse me, uh, but who is this? Is this a, f a friend of yours? No, that's Decker. Uh, Decker Rootkit. Guys, fuck shit. What? The, you can read the shirt. In the buffook are you doing here? He owns a blimp now. Falls down. Well, half a blimp. Yeah, I know he owns a blimp because I've been giving my stash to his people, but he ain't giving back. Oh, those are inside orphans. They're buried. That's not true. Uh, I have a lot of money, and I will pay it all back. It's all tied up in uh, in the label right now. We got a lot of releases coming soon, and the pro projections for these are crazy. They're crazy. <laughs> it's gonna be fine. I just need like another month, year, two. Decker, we've been doing business for a couple years now, mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know what they call me around here? Yeah, I've heard it a couple of times. The big buffook. Yeah. They call me the big buffook. Well, Do you know why they the, call me that? It's one of the word nerds type. Yep. Because I don't let any buffook think they can get past the big buffook. Bob, I need more money. I need more yeah, money. Yeah, go, go to get the one with the raised aerials. I told <laughs> you. Here's the but you know why else they call me that? She's my favorite too. Right. Call me the big buffook because I got a big heart. Come here, you old SOB. Ah, I we over. hug. Dick, dick to we face. Hug. <laughs> like, yeah. Over and back. Man, I can't. <laughs> I can't believe you would you you were doing uh, the like not paying me thing as a joke. Yeah, that was a like, joke. between friends. Oh yeah, boy, we oh, sure. You got you got me, man. You mm. got me. You yeah. got me so good. Yeah, so we're doing another quest, and since we're good friends, uh, we should do that now and not think about that other thing. Know what I mean? Uh, sure, but yeah. uh, I can't go with you on a quest. We really need you. Please. I can't. I'm running Jaya here. I got Please the Please don't leave me alone There's with, no way. You well, think Fatty Lipowitz can handle this kind of intake here? No, we're, we're working the the fields that we're, we're making product. We're pushing it hot every single day. You think Fatty Lipowitz can handle it? I don't think I, so. Uh, I approach him. I go, stranger, I know we've just met, and your town is quite lovely, but... We need your help, whoever you are. I'm sorry, I can't do it. I love you guys to death. I'm so glad that you come here to spend a couple months with me, hang out with me here in the Giant. That'd be, it's, it's fine, I'm really happy you're here, but I can't do it, I'm sorry. Can I have money? Oh, uh, but sure, yeah. Nima steps forward. If, if I know the tales of Grimo correctly, you could probably win him over in a game of chance. Challenge him. Oh, yeah, a game of flippity sticks. Miri, uh, you know flippity sticks, if memory recalls. Vaguely. But uh, I almost thought I had something, but I don't remember this at all. I'm starting to remember the girl and the elk. All right, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> all right. No, I think goes. I can beat you. You got to come with us if I win. Okay. If I win, yeah, I'll buy you steak dinner, Miriam. okay. If I win. Yeah. Oh, flippy flop. Not bad, not bad. That's a good flip. <laughs> <laughs> all right, flip it. Flip, flip, flip. Oh. Wait, hold on. Mulligan. Yeah. That's a flippity flap. What? Mary, that's never happened before. Explain. <laughs> you guys, I'm not an expert in this game. <laughs> Sorry. I've screwed that up. It's like a 17. Oh, and add your flippity modifier. So that's a 37 for me. <laughs> She's good. I guess Grimo wins. Grimo wins, yeah. You know, flippity stick, sticks rules. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I got Somebody walks up behind Grimo. What? What do you mean she's getting married? They just talk about these things in the gyre. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Dan, if you'll explain. <laughs> was was that the blind guy or the a little kid or keep your voice down, blind and deaf guy? <laughs> 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 so uh 
So uh, Grimo's bodyguard uh, explains. Uh, I got it. I got it. I got it. You got, got it. it. I got it. All right. I turn to Raxan and I go, God, this whole thing is so pretty. It's pretty embarrassing. Yeah. It's probably. Uh, I'm just glad that I'm here and not at Shattercock's wedding because that would be right. that. There's no way that like this can be worse than that. That's got to be I, a disaster. And, and considering we have so many invites, yeah, I can't see ourselves being there right now. No, absolutely with this not. sort of situation. This is happening. this is embarrassing. I'm just glad we're not at Shattercock's wedding. Well, what are you talking about, Shattercock's wedding? Who said what? Oh, now? I'm sorry. Uh, short, short, tiny person. Um, that isn't Miri. Uh, Shattercock is a dragon lady who we quested with one time. She was a hero she, to the people. She was a hero, uh, kind and just and magically imbued uh, with powers. She can climb That walls. were useful, unlike Decker's powers. Um, and uh, I am aware of who Shattercock is. Well, this person that you don't know ended up settling down in why, a quiet cottage. Where's the invitation? Where's the wedding invitation? Hmm? I've got a few here. I mean, I don't know why I'm she'd send wedding here. invitations like to strangers. I have 16 invites that have been yeah. coming via... I'm DJing it. Yeah. I mean, hand you a flyer. Okay, well I actually got this one. I don't think it was yeah. meant to be sent to me, but it says to Grime... Grimo, Grimo. Give me that. Grimo Prude fellow. Uh, yeah, so she's... Bodyguard, can I talk to you for a second? Yeah. Okay, it is settled. My bodyguard and I will be accompanying uh, you on your quest to <laughs> Shattercock's wedding. I will. Yes. Well, you don't will. you have to? You have to tell the blo the bodyguard, right? Yeah, we're going to. Horrible. You have to write every letter. You have to write every letter. Horrible. Doing the whole backstory. Has he ever left, uh, has he ever left the gyre before? Uh, Derek, did you explain about the hot kingdom? The hot yeah, kingdom. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay, about the hot <laughs> Okay, so we will go with you guys and your blimp to the gyre. Are we... What, go to the gyre? I mean, sorry, to Shattercock's, Shattercock's no, wedding. No, 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 we're not, we don't want to go to the wedding. Why are we going to the wedding? Not, the not, weddings are the whole. That's the whole reason we're here is that we don't have to be at the wait, wedding. Wait, wait, wait. We said we were going to a funeral, which wait, is this place. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Huh? They told me. I got a, I have an obligation. I don't know if I mentioned, I am DJing the wedding. I t t this was arranged months ago. I forgot because of all the drugs and, and ecstasy. And well, as crash. always, we leave it to Miri. Miri, let's go to the wedding. Miri, I, I got a choice. reputation up, whole man. I... I can't miss my gig. Miri, you're so noble. You, I think the, the logistic numbers were, were wrong. I think you won, and I, I have to go. I have to go with you. I have to go with you. I'm so glad you agree. Puzzle. Let's, uh, yeah, let's get the final member back. Lead oh. the way, uh, Decker. <clears throat> all right, you, you guys are you traveling by to... mini blimp. Well, we get on the mini blimp. They all walk away. And <laughs> the like, wait, wait, with the hand out. Wait, 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 where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> I'll pack right. my things. <laughs> oh boy, I wear my greatest things. And it's, <laughs> it's in his bedroom, taking stuff out of a suitcase and putting it in, <laughs> into <floor>. nothing. <laughs> Can we? <laughs> and then it closes the suitcase that's empty. He just walks through the wall. <laughs> 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 oh no! Yeah, just as just as he walks out of his little house, he sees the blimp. Yeah. Or he doesn't see shit. I guess <laughs> he, just, he doesn't <laughs> even <laughs> hear it. He's deaf, dumb, and blind. He can't do anything. So the guy standing next to him sees the blimp flying off in the distance. Mm -hmm. the, the force of the blimp's propellers blow open his suitcase and all his things. <laughs> well, there's nothing in it. Yeah, what's wrong? Just one blow into underwear. it. Yeah. <laughs> I figure he's just sitting in his room, like, oh, wait for him to get me. <laughs> Knock when you're here. <laughs> and they so, actually went back there. <laughs> 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 Go to Shattercock's wedding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh. <laughs> so yeah, you, you travel by Mini Blimp to a beautiful cottage found nestled in a bright and peaceful clearing. Birds and woodland creatures frolic on the outskirts, and a bubbling brook trickles beneath a quaint little footbridge. The footbridge takes you to a path lined with daisies. You follow the path, and it leads to the home of the one and only Shattercock. There's a sign on the front door that says, Wedding guests, head out back. And you follow the path to the back of the house where there's a wedding underway. Aww. Standing beneath a flower-covered white gazebo is the stunning Shattercock, clad in white, standing opposite a, a beautiful white. orc woman with purple giant princess hair that you recognize as Koja. She's holding a butt plug, by the way. <laughs> Shattercock. So. Yeah. That's not a ring. Yeah. It's a cock ring and a butt plug. A small gnome wearing dark red robes is reading from a leather-bound book. Before them sit three rows of the most eclectic group of wedding guests you've ever seen. Orcs, humans, tieflings, elves, mountain dwarves, gnomes, and a fish man. And then a gaggle of street urchins. 
<laughs> I'm so sorry I'm late. <laughs> Interrupting. I like noisily start setting up audio equipment. <laughs> like, Fuck, in, in the middle of the ceremony, yeah. uh, sitting next to a towering Goliath is a small one-armed man with a beard who spots you and waves at Raxan. Yeah. yeah. My best friend, yeah. Grimo. <laughs> Uh, I don't, uh, Bruce. Um, would you tell us a little bit about Shattercock's wedding? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you, you did a great job describing it, but it's the classiest, nicest wedding I think anybody's ever seen. There's flowers everywhere, and there's just—it's just a—it's just a, a beautiful, a beautiful scene that's been set. Um, Is that like a YMCA or something? And <laughs> no, they spent obviously like hundreds of thousands of gold on this. Um, and Shattercock and Koja are up there exchanging vows. Everybody's tearing up. They're. You know, tears of joy. Not from their eyes. Um, <laughs> no vows yet. Not a dry seat in the house. Oh, no vows yet. No vows no yet. No Okay. Well, well, there's still uh, the, the. You said the gnome is doing performing yeah, the yeah. ceremony. So it, it, you, you, I would say you just got to. Uh, I guess you both walked down at the same time. Oh, maybe. we did the walk out. But yeah, you're you're down there and you're uh, not walk out, walk in. The walk of shame. I, I'm sorry, walk just in. started. Derek, no. Derek leans over to Grimo and goes, "Little person who I just met. Um, fun fact." The uh, the one not Shattercock but the other one I used to be her king captain. Grimo, his hands are in fists like Arthur. You know the meme, and he is infuriated. He cannot believe what he is witnessing. That Shattercock, who never boned him not once, even though he bathed her like a hundred thousand times, is marrying this orc girl. He's fuming. So he's fuming. Uh, the the gnome. Uh, you kind of catch the last bit of his phrase, which is, you must speak now or forever hold your peace. What is that? I think I hear a voice. I, it sounds like someone's trying to talk. Grima's so mad he can't speak. Hi, Shattercock. It's us. Oh, it's Raxan. <laughs> hey. Hi, Raxan. How you doing? Good. You're getting married. You got Wow. <laughs> All right, let's continue with the ceremony. That's great. Keep doing that. All right, say what you said before. We'll talk later. But, okay, one more time. You 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 must speak now. Should anyone have any objections to this marriage? The Shattercock, hey. Hey, Raxan. We got your invite. Okay, well, I'm glad you made it. We're here. D Decker's here, too. Decker! What's You want it? And he, you got it. He spins a record and like puts yeah. it on. <laughs> okay, sorry, go back. That's okay. <laughs> Got like a, a half a coconut to his ear. Oh, Mary, I love this song. One more time. Um, speak now or forever. Shattercock. Hello, mm. Derek. It's so good to see you. Congratulations on getting married. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. I'm really glad you guys can make it. This is uh, my short, half, half sized friend. Uh, what's your name? Oh, it's, a, it's Grimo. I remember Grimo. What? No, that's Miriatus. No, Miri. Oh, oh. Yes, but then Miri has another half-sized friend. Right, I, did, I, I saw Grimo. I don't, didn't get your name, sir. Grimo! Grimo. Do you have something to say? Uh, uh. All right, well, I guess we'll continue with the wedding. I mean, Grimo just won't talk. Have so. a good wedding. Thank you. Uh, uh, it Gr looks uh, nice. Miriana steers the blimp with his butthole. <laughs> what? Oh, all right. That is not true. All right. <laughs> I mean, okay, well, like, that's not, that's great. I love you guys, but we all, we all look at Grimo. We gotta like, do the wedding. We gotta finish you... the wedding, right, Koja? Shattercock, let's do this. Your your friends keep interrupting us, and she kind of glares at, at Captain King Derek, like cuts her eyes at him. They're, no, they're just saying. Did, did you? They're just saying. Invite? No, they you invite? I invite. Of course, Koja. I invite, I invite her all. It's me, Derek. your I'm king captain. Yes, Derek. Come you on, she's, me. She's actually as a king captain. I think technically I'm able to marry you. You want me to do that? Yeah, come on. I should go up. I should yeah, go yeah, up. Please come up. Should I do that? No, 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 I should no, no. do that. We got I'm another marriage. Up. You got it. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Record, puts this it down. Hey, 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 hey. Who wants to get married today? <laughs> All right. You kick the gnome off. The yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I pick him up and then I go, start running. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, hey, thanks everybody for yeah. coming out. You got a lot of weirdos, huh? Uh, absolutely. They're all my friends, though. Weird friends. All my friends. Um, but yeah, you two look pretty hot, and so I think this is going to be a pretty banging wedding. You better um, Can't wait to see you guys rip through each other or whatever you're going to do tonight. Right. Um, but yeah, so um, I guess, I don't know who goes first, because you both are kind of chicks. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I guess I'll just go ahead and just say you're done. Okay. Unless anyone else has anything they want to say. Jadakak, you can't get married! Oh! Grimo. Stranger, we told you not to interrupt this wedding. Yeah, shh. Grimo, come up here. Come up here. Uh, okay, okay. Uh. Come up here. Grimo, why should we not be married? Oh, 
Cause, cause Shattercock, uh, you, cause you have to go on an adventure, a quest to to save someone who's in danger. Immediately, Shattercock comprehends and goes, Koja, is it okay? What if I go and save one last person? Dear, dear goes honestly, like we could probably, we'd probably be fine if you want to stay and get married. It's probably totally fine. The first time I've agreed with the king captain in five years. Shattercock, we need you. We need you in your spider stuff in your big bag. Mary, is that true? I wouldn't mind having you along. See? <laughs> <A> glowing review. <laughs> Shattercock, he's desperate. <laughs> Mary, is that true? You, you, you yes, can't get married. Yes, the little it, people are look, desperate. If you get married, here, including me, then then you then you're not gonna you're not gonna uh, you're gonna be too afraid to risk your life. Obviously, because, obviously, this, this little stumbling halfling. She doesn't. Or he, he doesn't. So he can, doesn't want me to get married. Can you imagine? You have to choose right now. These idiots that you call your friends or me. If they love you, let them go. And if they come back to you, then you'll know. I'm not sure what she's talking. he's talking about now. But I'm going to go save that person. I will be back for you. No, I won't be here for you. Well, in that case. (laughs) Say what I just said. In that case, we're going to do one last thing in front of everyone here today. I'm up for it. And then they both go down on each other really, really hard. <laughs> and I just, I mean, like, go at it. It's like at it for 45 minutes. It's just like, they're at, they're uh, they're slamming each other and they're like licking each other. And it's just, it's, it's wet. It's just, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, all the people at the wedding kind of slowly stand up and walk away, extremely confused, except for Saite. Uh, I'm doing this. <laughs> Rax and old friend. Oh, all right. Um, yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> Decker like leans in. Just, we need to renegotiate my fee. So um, after that intense uh, 69 session, 45 minute love making of session, yeah. 45 minutes, and then Jaws a second just, one, like, maybe after an hour's break. Oh, yeah, um, another one too. Yeah, you guys eat. You gotta rehydrate. You eat all the cake and the good food that was supposed to be for the wedding. Burn a lot um, of calories. Yeah, hop in a little blimp, uh, a little mini blimp, and take off into the sunset. And that's the end of episode two. All right. <laughs> wow. Oh, geez. Um, Wonderful. Yeah, that was <laughs> what pretty is weird. The goal? Yeah. <laughs> we're helping Elf do something. There was like a fish man. Fish Some, man. Yeah. All right, we're Some saving point. the fish man. We have the gyro For fishmen. Thanks everybody for watching. Come back in two weeks and uh, watch us be silly again. Bye. Bye. Bye.